What you guys got another video here for you on making Chrome secure in a few simple steps. That's what we're going to be taking a look at today. So if you're using Google Chrome, then you want to make sure that you've got these settings in place to make sure that you're using the most uh, secure settings in Chrome. So enabling Chrome's enhanced protection uh, is the first thing that you want to do. So to do this, make sure you go up to the top right hand side here and click the three dots. And we're going to come down to settings inside settings. We're going to click on this one, move over to privacy and security on the left hand side. And then inside here, we're going to go into security. You should have a few options here. Make sure this is set to safe browsing, enhanced protection. If you're on standard protection, then you can move this up to enhanced protection here. And you can see here, this gives you much more protection when browsing the web. You can see it predicts and warns you about dangerous events before they happen, improves your security for you and everyone on the web, and warns you if passwords are exposed to data breach and things like that. So these are the things that you want to make sure that you've got set in place. Next up, we're going to be talking about avoid insecure websites. If you look up the top here on your web browser, on the top left, you will see a padlock. If you don't see a padlock here, that means the website is not secure. It's not using HTTPS. And you can see here, connection is secure. And we can see all the information about this. So when you click on here, it will say, your information, for example, passwords or credit card numbers is private when this is sent to this site. And this is because it's got a padlock on it. So any sites that don't have this padlock, it's not secure. You can see the certificate is also valid. And these are the things that you want to check before you go to any sort of website, especially if you're doing some sort of payment on the Internet. Next up, updating Google Chrome regularly. Now, if you don't have this set to automatically update, then you can be running a outdated browser. It's important that you use the very latest uh, browsers from Google, and this way you will get the most secure browsing experience possible. Now, they normally update this every month or so, so always keep this updated. You can go in here and check manually, but make sure that you have it set to automatic, and that way you will be uh, updating your browser in the background. Next up, enabling two-step verification. This is something I see a lot of people avoiding because it's too much hassle. But really, you should be using this for all of your Google accounts and any other type of account that is really important to you, especially money type accounts. You can see here on the Google account, it's set to two-step verification, and that should be on. And anytime you go to log in, if you log out of your account, it will send you a text message to your mobile phone and it will authorize it. You also want to make sure you change your passwords on a regular basis here. And this means that you're staying very secure and you're not going to have any sort of security breach on your account. This is important. Next up, Chrome safety check. Always run this Chrome safety check every now and then just to make sure that you don't have any sort of issues with your browser. Chrome has a built in tool that allows you to test how secure your browser is. This tool will also help you identify any data breaches available browser updates and any sort of malicious extensions that you may have installed on your browser. So it's important that you run this check tool on a regular basis to make sure that you don't have any issues. You can see it will go through a bunch of checks like updates, passwords, safe browsing, extensions and other tests like that to make sure you are safe. Next up, we're taking a look at clean your computer. While antivirus software does the job of removing malware from your system, it can also miss potential threats built into your browser that might be hiding and this could be like man in the middle attacks and things like that so going up to the three dots here and going to settings and then inside here you can go down to the advanced section on the left hand side here drop this open and you should see uh, reset and cleanup this is not to reset your browser we're going to go in here because there is a cleanup feature inside here that we're going to run so inside here, you'll get two options, restore settings to their original defaults, and you'll have clean up computer. Hit this clean up computer, and this will go through a bunch of checks to make sure that your browser is safe. You can see Google Chrome finds harmful software on your computer and removes it. Report details to Chrome about harmful software, system settings, and processes that were found on your system. This is to help keep your browser nice and safe. Any sort of exploits will be uh, found and detected and then be sent back to Chrome to make sure that these don't infiltrate your system again or any other people that are using Google Chrome. So it's a good feature to have. 
So checking for harmful software will take a bit of time, let it run its checks. Now it's important that you run other software as well on your computer and do regular maintenance like uh, virus scans and also run other malware scans like Malwarebytes, Hitman Pro and ADW Cleaner which will remove pups and other types of software that's uh, installed on your system. You need to run these along with these sort of checks as well just to make sure that your system isn't being breached and you have malware built in. If you use Windows Defender, that should do it automatically. Next up, don't be fooled by incognito mode. A lot of people fall for this thinking they are completely invisible on the internet when they use incognito mode. But basically, you can see here what it's telling you this will actually do. Now you can browse privately and other people who use this device won't see your activity. However, downloads, bookmarks and other reading lists items will be saved. So you can see here your browsing history, your cookies and other data and information um, entered in forms will not be uh, saved on your system, but it will save websites that you visit. Your employee or school may be able to detect this and also the Internet service provider, which is your ISP, will be able to detect this. So regularly clean your browsing history as well. This is also another essential part. You can go into your privacy and settings and clean browsing history. You can do advanced or you can do basic depending on what you want to do. This will remove all of your browsing history from your computer depending whether you want to do all time or you want to do just the last hour or so. I'd advise you to do all time and remove all the autofill information, all of the passwords and other sign-in information and data stored. Cookies and other site data. This will remove passwords as well. So if you're thinking that you've took the tick out of passwords and other sign-in and thinking your sign-in information will be safe, it won't be if you leave the ticking cookies and other site data. It's important that you understand that all these sign-in uh, data will be removed, like your sign-in and password information. So if you don't have them saved, then they will be removed when you run this cleaner. It's important that you do this on a regular basis to remove all of the data from your computer, and this will remove any sort of junk that's stored in temporary internet files and other locations like that. You've got the time gap here range, which is the last hour, 24 hours, seven days, four weeks, and then all time. It's always best to do all time. It will completely remove everything from your browsing history. Sometimes it's going to help speed up a little bit more page loading times after you've cleaned this, especially if you've got a lot of junk inside here and it ends up in gigabytes in size. I see people not running this on their computer on a regular basis, and it does actually hinder performance with your browser. So I like to run this on a regular basis. Next up, we're talking about browser extensions. Are they safe? Should you use them? So many people use browsing extensions. And to be honest, some browser extensions require access to almost everything that you browse on the internet. They can sometimes see sites that you've visited and also view your keystrokes and even passwords. So not every browsing extension is safe and some may be malicious. So be careful which ones you install on your system. Try to keep your browser as default as possible without the need for all of these extensions because some of these are harvesting data from you. So be careful which ones you install. Next up, if you want to do banking online, try downloading a Linux distro and create a bootable USB flash drive with that distro. And then basically you could just put that into the computer and boot up to it. This is not going to install on your computer. What it's going to do is boot up what we call a live environment. And you can see here, I can access the internet and basically search for my bank of my choice and then log in and basically do my banking through this method here. What is the benefit of doing it this way? Well, it means that nothing is running in the background. That means any malware or any other stuff that may be on your computer or your browser may be infected it's not going to matter because we're booting up to a live environment where there's nothing running in this uh, sort of environment, which makes it much more safer to do online banking. You're not installing Linux on your system. When you shut down, it will go back to your Windows operating system. This is the safest way to do online banking, in my opinion. It means that you won't have any sort of uh, malicious code or anything like that running in the background, which could uh, basically steal your details when you log on to your bank. Anyway, that's going to be about it for this video. hope this video helps you out. My name has been Brian from brightechcomputers.co.uk. Just want to say a big shout out to all my YouTube members who join my YouTube members group. Your names are rolling up on the screen right now. And I shall see you again for another video real soon. Thanks again for watching. Bye for now.
Thank you.